Hi, my name is Ashley Allen. I'm the CEO at IT Equality, and today I'm going to be walking you through co-terming and amending contracts in Salesforce CPQ. All right, so this is part three. We're going to build on some of the previous work that we've done in the other two sessions. Um, also, we're in Classic right now. This seems to be working better today in Classic. So I'm going to show you the contract matching in Classic, and then we'll go to Lightning to look at the amendments. All right, so I'm looking at an add-on opportunity for an account. We'll just go to this account and take a look at what we have. So we have a first opportunity and a second opportunity that both went closed one and resulted in two different contracts. We also have an add-on opportunity that's closed one. Here we can see our two different contracts. So if we click into one of those contracts and scroll down, we'll see that we have two subscriptions here and they both end on the same end date, which means that they co-term. So we'll go back to our account here again. Um, and let's take a look at our second add-on. So if we were just making another add-on opportunity as a sales user, and perhaps we weren't as familiar with the contracts that are currently on this account. Um, so we're going along, making our opportunity. There's nothing particularly special about the opportunity. Um, there are some settings on the account that we can look at in just a minute. But when I go ahead and make a new quote, make sure that this is associated with our account. As soon as I save this quote, the system is going to ask me which contract I would like to co-term this to. So I can choose one of these contracts or I can skip it and make a third contract. Um, but I'm being presented with these options and really that's what co-terming is about. It's about selecting one of these contracts so that your subscription end dates will co-terminate um, with one of these contract end dates. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go back to Lightning and we'll start on our account page. So let's go to our IT Equality account. So how does this all work? Um, on the account, there are renewal co-term information. So as long as the co-termination says prompt and, or, um, or always, um, and the co-term event, you can set that to add on. This is going to prompt you for, you know, do you want to co-term your agreements? Yes or no. And then when it comes to your contract subscription and your contract renewals, that's also controlled on the account here. So these are really important settings to be familiar with. And anytime you have any questions, you can always mouse over the help text. Um, it's very thorough. So let's go to a different account and walk through the process of making a renewal. All right, so I'm going to go to my accounts. We'll click on M7 because this one doesn't have any opportunities or quotes or contracts yet. So at this point, we're going to walk through contract generation using Salesforce CPQ. Some of this may be a review for you all, um, but we're going to walk through it from the beginning. All right, so on our account, if we look at our details, we have our renewal pricing um, contract-based renewal model. And as far as co-terming, that's also set. So let's go ahead and make a first opportunity. So from a brand new account, this would be our, the first sale for this account. So this is a new customer. Give this a stage close date, let's just say November 1st. All right, and we don't need to fill out amount because that's going to be populated from our quote. There is no primary quote at this point, so we'll just save this. 
All right, our opportunity was created. Let's click on this to go there. Our details, everything looks good. We're going to make a new quote now. New. From this new quote, we'll select our opportunity. Um, let's see if, there we go, Lightning found it. This is for M7. All right, status draft, that all looks good. We should always have a start date, especially when we're working with um, contracts and co-term because these are subscription products. Um, the start date is critical for that contract creation. We can also put in a subscription term, but if your products have default terms, then that'll pull through as well. All right, so we'll save this and now we can go ahead and add our products for this quote. So we'll click on edit lines. We have to choose a price book. So we'll go ahead and accept the standard price book and save. All right, we're going to add products. Clicked on that. And we have this bundle product that is something that we're going to be changing and playing with in a future video. We're going to check on this test product bundle and select that. And you'll notice even though I selected one product, I actually have three products in here. And that's because these products are part of the bundle. And so where this shows up as having a, an editable quantity, these show up as locked. If I want to adjust anything in this bundle, I can always click on this wrench to reconfigure the line. And then in here, I can make whatever changes I'm authorized to make. If I try to make a change that is beyond the limits of the way this bundle's been configured, and I try to save that, it's going to come back and let me know that my maximum quantity is 10. So I'll go ahead and reduce the number here back to three save that. All right, so once our bundle looks good, we can go ahead and save this. Um, I'll demonstrate one more thing just in case it's still on. Let's see if I give this a 23% discount and give it a quick save. This is going to pop up and say discount cannot exceed 20%. That is a price rule. It's a validation price rule that's stopping me from doing this. So it's important to close this out. I found that out earlier when I didn't close this out. I just ignored that it was here and I went ahead and I changed this back to say less than 20% and I gave it a quick save and my error did not go away. Um, I have discovered that you have to actually close out the error and now you can see that the value is saving and it is functional, but that error is going to stay there until you close it. So just keep that in mind because I found that to be um, a bit frustrating when I didn't know. Let's save this. Everything looks good. So we'll mark this as primary and in doing so, we're going to have our opportunity inherit all of those products that are on this particular quote. So I'm saving this. All right, and there's this process that runs. It says it's recalculating. We'll go back to our opportunity now, and it might take a couple seconds before the products really load onto the opportunity. So we'll just give it a minute and refresh. All right, perfect. Here are our products. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close this opportunity because everything looks good. We'll select this and we'll say this is closed one. All right. So now this opportunity is successfully closed one. At this point, a lot of people want to automate as soon as an opportunity goes closed one, check the contracted checkbox immediately. We don't have any automation because I'm demonstrating purely out of the box. Um, so I'm going to manually check this contracted checkbox and that's going to automatically create a contract as well as 
a subscription entry on that contract for any subscription products. We have three products and only the test bundle is a subscription product. So these ones are going to drop off when we look at the contract. I'll click on save and fingers crossed everything loads exactly the way that it's supposed to. But at any point, if your product hasn't been configured with subscription settings or your account hasn't been configured with subscription settings, or if you're missing a start date, all of these things could make it so that your contract does not generate. Let's refresh our screen and hope that we have done everything required to make our contract. Here it is, we have our contract and it's defaulting into a draft status. So let's click into that and see what we have. Our test bundle has shown up as a subscription with a start date that matches our contract start date and an end date that's 12 months into the future. This product has a default term of 12 months, so this looks perfect. All right, so from here, we have a few options. One, we can renew this contract. Two, we can amend this contract. Or three, we can make a new opportunity that's an add-on, and we can add a new opportunity to this contract. All right, let's take a look at how we would renew this contract. All right, we have our start date, our end date, our term length. All right, we can do renewal quoted in order to generate um, a renewal opportunity as well as a renewal quote. So if I check on this checkbox, just like a minute ago when I checked on the contracted checkbox, a contract was created as well as the subscription line this checkbox is going to automatically make a renewal opportunity with the renewal opportunities um, opportunity product as well as a quote with a quote line so we'll take a look at this as soon as i hit save we'll see in the related list on this contract as soon as it loads we'll have a new renewal opportunity so here's our renewal opportunity under the related list, you can see here's the renewal opportunity. So let's take a look at that and see what's in there. We have a quote and we have our opportunity product. So this is all set to match the original sales price. So if we had wanted to have our renewal with an uplift or if we wanted our renewal to be list price without any of those discounts, we can change those renewal settings as well. All right, so in our quote, this is our renewal quote. We have our related line. All right, so this all looks good. Here's our renewal. So when we're ready to close this, we can go ahead and close our renewal quote. For now, let's go back to our account and take a look at this contract. We're going to go ahead and let's, let's modify our existing contract. So here on the account, you can see the same contract that was created um, on the opportunity. It also shows up on the contract. All right. so we can choose to amend this contract. Let's say somebody went back and changed their minds instead of wanting um, one bundle, they want two bundles. So let's click on amend. We are amending this contract. That's correct, so we'll click on amend. And this is going to take us straight to the quote line editor where we can now choose to add products that maybe were forgotten or were being added after the fact. We can change our quantity in here. So let's change this to three. And for the sake of learning, let's add one of these sample products. Select that. 
All right, let's calculate this. That looks good. Okay, we're gonna save this. So now we have an amendment opportunity that was automatically created, as well as an amendment quote, which is what we're looking at right now. And it has the type of amendment. So if we go back to our contract, let's go back to our contract and see what it looks like. All right, so we've got these subscriptions. We have our renewal. Um, we'll go back to our amended quote. Let's look at our amended opportunity. All right, so this hasn't been closed yet. Let's close this. All right, so we've got our products in here. Our amended contract is right here. Let's view this subscription. Still has a quantity of one. So something isn't updating. We're gonna have to look into that. It's our subscription contract. All right, this is supposed to have our um, co-terminated quote in here as well as an updated subscription line but it's not showing up so we'll have to take a look at that oh I think I just needed to refresh so here's the co-terminated quote and that's showing up now I'm still not seeing it under subscription so we'll have to take a look at that um, but this is how we can amend a contract as well as create a renewal for a contract. The only thing that we haven't done in Lightning is to view that um, co-terminated um, quote when we make a new add-on opportunity and then we select which, which contract we want to co-terminate to. We did that at the beginning of this video under um, in Classic. So this is most of contract management. Um, hopefully you have found this video helpful. I will take a look at why that other subscription hasn't shown up right here. Um, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye.